Hey guys, a few days back I uploaded my review for Enderol. I thought it could be fun to also go over the mods I used for this. I of course completed this game and found no problem using the mods I'll mention. The first few mods I'll mention are not Enderol only, but work well together with it. I won't be as detailed as I usually am on these first few mods, because there is a lot to these mods and you most likely will be familiar with the first few I'll mention. I do of course quickly describe them, so if you are not familiar with these mods, you still get the idea of what these do. I also like to use these mods in, uh, in Skyrim. The first few make some changes to the display of your stats, compass, crosshair and other hot elements on the screen while you're playing. Immersive hot and less intrusive hot lets you customize the hot display. Immersive hot and less intrusive hot have a lot of options included to configure the hot elements and adjust it to your liking. You can even replace everything to your liking. The compass can be toggled on and off by pressing a button of your choice. This also removes the quest markers that you can see in game. Now, when I don't use these mods, I'll be paying a lot of attention to my compass. When I use uh, this mod, I'll only call the compass when I'm uh, completely lost or when I quickly need the direction. And the next mod I use is I activate, and this removes the text press E or press A button you normally see on activatables. Less intrusive hot also has this function, but I activate does a little more than, than just that. It also removes the words on screen like harvest, open, unlock, and talk. You can see the list of words that are removed here. To make this mod apply to nearly everything in the game, you will have to have some knowledge of the tool test 5 edit. How to do this is described on I activate this mod's description. If you don't do this, it still works for most objects, plants and NPCs, but you may occasionally find objects which it isn't applied to. Another mod I use is more hot, and this gives you more information on an item before you pick it up. In Enderol you can't wait. To see the time of the day, matter of time makes even more sense to use. And this adds a clock widget to your screen, which can also be toggled on and off. Like I said earlier, there comes uh, more to these mods, but I don't want to dwell on these too much. Most of you will probably be familiar with these mods, and if not, there are very well detailed videos for it. And what I just mentioned should give you an idea of what it does. Next I use quick loot, so I don't have to go in every inventory when I loot something. Whether it be corpses or treasure, quick loot makes the loot system feel more like Fallout's loot system. Of course, you can still enter the inventory how you would normally do, by pressing R for keyboard or Y for the Xbox controller. There is one quest in, uh, in the game that I found that can break when you use quick loot. Uh, the quest is the one where you have to open a strongbox on the beach to help a child near Riverville. Simply don't use quick loot for this strongbox, open the strongbox the alternative way. Other than this quest, I didn't have trouble with this mod. You're not from here, are you? I heard him talk. Your accent is so funny. Next I use static objects, so I don't accidentally pick up spoons, wooden balls, buckets or other things you most likely never would want to pick up. To me it happened a lot that I accidentally pick up or even steal some clutter I never wanted. This only works for things that aren't placed inside chests, barrels, wardrobes or other storage objects. This mod is made for Skyrim, so it doesn't work on all the clutter, but it still helps a lot. Next I use player head tracking. This makes it so that the player will move its head toward anything that might be of interest around him. This can be dialogue, loot or an animal your character is close to. A small feature which I personally don't want to go without. The next two mods are mods I had installed, but eventually didn't make use of too much. The first one is Smartcast. With Smartcast you can choose certain spells to activate without actually having to activate the spell yourself. And let me show you an example. You can choose to activate a certain spell every time you engage combat, or to activate a certain spell when you are below a certain health percentage. Some people do consider this mod as a cheat mod, and I myself see it more as a convenience not having to change my spells continuously. And when used with care, this can be a very helpful and fun mod. Anyone that is a spellcaster in, uh, in Skyrim will surely know how a bother it can be to go through all the menus every time. Another mod I had installed for Enderol but didn't use a lot was Quicklight. 
Quick light works fine, but the more brighter lighting options do seem a little bit out of place in Enderal. Torches are a much better alternative for Enderal. The lighting in Enderal looks great with these and cost further than quick light brightest options. If you just quickly want to cast light over a certain area, quick light can still be very helpful and a quick to call light source. You activate this by holding the activate button for a certain amount of time. A combat mod I used is Violence. This mod lets you adjust the kill caps. If you use this be sure to not pick the DLC option uh, Dawnguard and Dragonborn. And finally I used Dual Sheet Redux. This lets you choose where you want certain weapons to be equipped when not wielding them. It also allows for the second weapon to be visible and makes stuffs and shields appear on your back when not equipped. There's a lot of customization to how you want to equip these items when not wielding them in your hands. Installing Dual Sheet Redux is done slightly different in Enderal. I'll talk about the following things, assuming that you know how to install Dual Sheet Redux. I'll quickly tell the things you need to keep in mind when installing this for Enderal. I will type out how to install um, this in the description below as well. When installing this for Enderal you need to be sure you tick the Enderal plugin option when installing XP32's maximum skeleton. You also need to make sure you get the Enderal Fnis patch. This allows Fnis and Enderal's custom animations to work together properly. Normally after installing Dual Sheet Redux you need to run a patcher. Before doing that here you need to install the Dual Sheet Redux Enderal patch. After this you can safely run the Skyproc patch. Like I said, I'll describe the full steps on how to install this in the description. Another combat mod you could use is TK Dutch. This allows you and the enemy to dodge attacks. This is done by double tapping one direction. I myself am not a big fan of this mod, but a lot of people seem to like it, so I thought I might as well mention it. I myself didn't mess around with too many graphic mods in Enderal. I don't use an EMB with Enderal either. All by all, there weren't too many things I wanted to change in Enderal. One graphic mod I do use is Superior Silverware. Silver bowls, silver candles and silver plates among other silver clutter are something you find a lot in both Skyrim and Enderal, especially in homes, shops and inns. Superior Silverware makes the silverware stand out and look nice. I do really advise against using too many graphic mods for Enderal altogether. Enderal looks very good without graphic mods and sometimes graphic mods might really mess things up. Uh, for example, some armors might not look too good if you use uh, certain body mods and this might even uh, mess things up in worse ways. If you do use graphic mods, I advise to use independent ones, like superior silverware, realistic miscellaneous items, uh, HD food and beverages, and other mods that only mess with a set number of things. Pick them carefully and know exactly what they do and what they change. Since, like I said, a lot of graphic mods won't look in place with an Enderal. Uh, this is of course also true for Skyrim, but I found it even more so for Enderal. Now that we have those out of the way, let us focus on the true Enderal mods. These mods would not work within Skyrim. The first two are small fixes. Enderal Better World basically adds really minor fixes to some landscape and light sources within Enderal. Enderal is huge, and of course, sometimes a rock or a certain part of the landscape might look a little bit off. This mod fixes a lot of these imperfections. I also like to use Enderal simple fixes. This also aims to fix some imperfections in the game. For all these fixes, it's best to read the readme on the pages itself. These two mods don't change anything too drastically, but all they all change a lot. Many so-called fixes are more like adjustments than actual fixes. For example, there are merchants in Enderal that don't have a barter option. The author makes the barter option available on these. Simple fixes also make some items which couldn't be enchanted enchantable, and does a number of other small fixes. And like I said, for all these fixes, it's best to read the readme on the page itself and see if you would like to have these fixes. And the same author of Simple Fixes has made a couple of other adjustments to Enderal in the form of mods that I personally enjoyed using. One of those is the Enderal level up with attributes. This shows the amount of health, stamina and mana you currently have when you level up and are about to choose whether you want mana, health or stamina to advance. Another mod this author made is the Enderal circlet enabled headwear. This allows you to wear circlets underneath boots and helps. For smithing, this author made the mod Enderal Handicraft Expanded. This improves the smithing and crafting system in Enderal. It will allow you to craft arrows at forge and break down armor, weapons and other miscellaneous items for ingots. Furthermore, this mod adds a new amulet. While having this amulet equipped, you can improve many pre-enchanted weapons and armors you couldn't improve before. 
When you use this mod, you will need more ores to make ingots to balance things out a little bit better. Keep in mind that you can melt many kinds of miscellaneous items with this mod. The mod static objects, which I showed earlier, disables picking up many clutter. With Handicraft Expanded installed, this miscellaneous trash could actually be useful for breaking down. The same author has made 3 more Ender mods, which could be interesting, I however did not use these. Ender and Enchanted Talismans enables you to wear multiple rings at the same time. This is done in an interesting way, but to me it felt a little bit too overpowered. The same author also made a patch for wieldable lanterns, which I can only remember using years back myself. Nowadays I use Quicklight. Finally this author made a mod to disable music in Enderal. You can choose to disable exploration and combat music. I didn't use this mod, but I've been giving it some thought. No combat music could actually be nice. The music in both Skyrim and Enderal are very well done, but at the same time can alert you unimmersively. Even if you disable the compass and disable the sneak button with immersive hut and less intrusive hut, the game still gives any attacks away by the change of music. This mod could really be a nice addition for more hardcore players who still like to have music but want to get surprised by enemy attacks. Next I chose two quest expanding mods. The first one is the Ice Claws Collection. This mod keeps track on how many Ice Claws you have collected. It also allows you to put quest markers for every one of these mushrooms. When found 20 of these shrooms, you will get some additional rewards varying from experience, even more carry weight, artisan points and learning points. You even have a 10% chance to get 10 carry weight instead of 1 when consuming your ice claw. I always feel like somewhat of a completionist in these kinds of games, and knowing how many collectibles I have obtained, or knowing how much I actually completed within a game, is something I personally like to know. I always thought Skyrim did something of a nice job keeping track of those uh, miscellaneous facts, even showing how many rabbits you killed for the fun of it. The mod Ice Claws collection will probably be too much of a cheat mod for most people, however finding many of these even with the quest markers is something that takes a long time. For Skyrim I use similar mods like the Crimson Nirn Root marker, a Stone of Perensia quest marker and East Empire pendant marker which I just found East Empire Pendant quest marker uh, has been hidden by the author for now. The other quest expanding mod I use is Myths and Legends Improved. There is a quest in Enderol called Myths and Legends. In this side quest you go up against legendary monsters and myths from within Enderol's universe. The rewards for looting some of these myths felt somewhat disappointing. Myths and Legends Improved improves the loot from defeating these myths from this quest and also improves some loot from other legendary monsters you face in Enderol. This original side quest has been a lot of fun to do. It's not always too straightforward as to where these myths are located or how to defeat them. You will have to find and read books to find tips and get an idea of where these are. I'll think about making a small montage walkthrough for this quest somewhere this week if I can come up with something. I also found a follower mod which I enjoyed having with me at times. This follower can be found at the Riverville Inn. Enderol doesn't come with followers that you can take with you, and looking at the amount of followers and endorsed followers mods on the Nexus Skyrim, I bet some people were disappointed there are none in Enderol. Making followers for Enderol seems harder and is done different than in Skyrim. I did not have major problems with her instead, but she can feel kind of overpowered in the beginning areas of the game. She did also get lost occasionally. At one point she just wandered off. I had no idea where she, where she went off to, but being a lot further in the story, I'm talking literally hours, she eventually came back again. I also heard her die twice, well I could swear she was essential. She can also carry items around for you. Now some people mentioned to use extensive follower framework with her for some extra features like uh, the managing of equipment. I did not use this though and have not tested the full playthrough with it installed, so I can't guarantee it will always work properly. I usually use immersive amazing follower tweaks for handling equip and managing multiple followers in Skyrim. I didn't try it out either on Enderol. Follower tools like extensive follower framework or immersive amazing follower tweaks might work, but I do really advise against using them to Enderol. Next I use two more mods that fix and improve some existing homes in Enderol. The mod Sun Temple Quarters gives you a somewhat fancy room in the Sun Temple Quarters. Here you will also find a chest with order armor, swords and order backpack which gives plus 200 carrying capacity. <laughs> the backpack is again somewhat of a cheat item, 
But I personally like to have more carrying capacity in these types of games. For the Witcher I even use the mods which in a way give you a limited carrying capacity. I myself just see it as a way to save some trips back and forth to, uh, to merchants. Another improvement mod to an existing home is the upper class home improvement mod. And this adds some items and makes some changes to objects from the existing player home located in the nobles quarters in Ark. Some static objects like barrels have been replaced with storageable barrels to store your items. A tenant rack has been added to the crafting hall and some visual fixes and changes have been made. This mod also fixes some things around the bathhouse, uh, located opposite of this home. This makes a correction to a wall NPCs lean against and a bard not playing the flute inside the bathhouse. Some minor fixes one might as well use. Of course, if you know some of my videos, it will be no surprise that I installed a decent number of home mods for Android as well to explore. My plan was to show all the home mods I had installed, but the full showcase of these home mods at the end of this video just feels out of place. If this video does okay, I probably make one final showcase video for Android showing these homes in full detail. These homes are the Island Abode, the Riverfield Tower, the Seaview Lodge and the George Side Roost. If anyone still wants to play Android, I hope this list gives you a new idea or improves your experience in Android even more. I leave all the names to the mods in the description, but I'm not sure if I can put the link in due to the number of mods I mentioned. Use some common sense here, like copy pasting the names of these mods in Google or on the Nexus itself. Let me know what mods you guys like to use with Android. Consider leaving a like or subscribe and of course endorse the mods uh, that you use. Thanks for watching everyone and see you all next time.